Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. If you haven't seen the show before, you know that um, um, I'm Art Bergeron. I've been uh, coming to the vineyard now for quite a while. My day job is working as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary, who, as you know, their goal in life, if you've been to any of my seminars, their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means the vineyard, that means they never want to leave. They don't want to go to the mainland. They certainly don't want to go to Nantucket, right? They, they want to stay right here. So the question is, who are the people that you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about in order to do exactly that, in order to stay right here? So a few people know me. Everybody seems to know my co-host, Sandy Cordoby, who has been here like forever, right? Uh, and has been for years really working with a lot of seniors. Her focus as a geriatric care manager at Horizons Geriatric. So she finds these great guests and usually introduces them, but asked me to do it today. We have this wonderful guest, Bob Laskowski. By the way, I hope I just pronounced that right, Bob Laskowski, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, who has been uh, coming to the Vineyard for a long time, has a long career in medicine and in healthcare management uh, uh, off of the Vineyard. But for purposes of this conversation is really important because he is involved in healthy aging Martha's Vineyard. And, and in terms of his personal interests, is, 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 is focused on internal medicine and geriatrics and has been for years and years. So, so despite the fact that he actually ran, uh, was the CEO of a larger healthcare system before his um, retirement, the focus today is really on kind of one of some of his passions. I could tell from, because we talked to him a little bit about it ahead of time. So I also want to ask Sandy, though, I know that, you know, Sandy, you, you we had talked about trying to convince Bob to come on last when we were talking last week and you explained why you thought that was so important. Can you talk about that for a second? Absolutely. Um, hi, Arthur and Bob, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your wisdom around this incredibly important topic with all of us. Um, as a geriatric care manager, we spend lots of time talking to our clients and we've got about 150 or 60 of them right now, um, talking to them and helping them have a conversation around something that isn't an easy, natural thing to have a conversation about for some people. Um, I'm kind of a guru about it. I love talking about it, but you know, because I want people to be able to, to look at um, what could possibly go on at end of life and what do they want that to look like to the extent that we can control it. And we can control a lot of that. So, um, so Bob is part of a coalition that I belong to on the Healthy Aging Vineyard Task Force. And, um, and, and, really is as passionate about this topic as I am and and many of our colleagues on that task force are and what we really just want to do is make sure that families have a way of having these conversations with each other in a comfortable setting as comfortable as it can be and and actually what I find when I sit with so many families is we really laugh we have a good time talking about it and people are relieved to finally be able to say hey this is what I'd like to look like and um, as somebody whose husband died when, when you know, he was 45 years old, we hadn't talked about, do you want to be married? Do you want to be cremated? What's going to happen? And, um, and that taught me an important lesson. These conversations are really super important, and we're here to help facilitate them in any way that we can. So again, I just thought Bob can add so much um, of his wisdom to this um, as both a Healthy Aging Task Force member, but also his long career in medicine. He's seen Especially a lot. because, as Sandy pointed out to me, he's coming on uh, on the eve of an important day. You've all heard the same, the same expressions, nothing's more certain than death and taxes, right? Well, tax day is coming. Well, actually, it's being postponed this year. So <laughs> one of the bizarre things is that the taxes aren't coming this year. But this other day is. So, Bob, can, can you talk a little bit about, about yourself and about, about this, this, the magic day that's coming and about the, goal, the goals of, of the of the, uh, Healthy Aging Martha's Vineyard? Sure. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Art, and thanks, Sandy, and thanks for all your wonderful work for uh, our community. I, I um, um, admire that. Um, as uh, as you uh, for the viewers here, just to reiterate a little bit what Art said, I'm a I'm a physician, and I um, and also I'm a, a son and a, a husband and a father, and it's all of those experiences are what drives me to to want to talk about um, advanced care planning and the importance of it. 
Uh, the day that Art is uh, talking about is National Healthcare Decisions Day, and that is uh, traditionally on April 16th. So uh, death and taxes, uh, this would be uh, death, but it's much more than that. It's about um, looking at one's life and uh, making sure that one, uh, when one is thinking about um, one's last days in this life, that, that the types of things that are important to us are considered. So what matters most is a phrase that um, we use regularly in, in the Advanced Care Planning Coalition. What matters most? So the uh, National Healthcare Decisions Day is, is an opportunity to just uh, take a, 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 a little bit of a breath in, uh, in the midst of our busy lives and to ask ourselves, what matters most? And, and how am I making sure that what matters most is represented to those who, um, who I uh, want to know that? So um, just a little background um, on National Healthcare Decisions Day. It's a, uh, a day that um, was uh, developed actually by a lawyer uh, in, um, I think, 2008, thereabouts, in Virginia. Nathan Kotkamp is uh, his name, a, a young, uh, younger lawyer. And he had, in his experience, uh, I think he has a practice kind of art, a little bit like yours. I don't know if you know him, but he, he took care of a lot of uh, older individuals who, um, unfortunately, had not sat down with themselves or with their family or with uh, with others that uh, they uh, wanted to and and had a conversation about what matters most and that that bothered him uh, he was coming across too many folks who didn't have a des anyone designated to speak for them if they couldn't speak for themselves they had no advanced care plan and it caused the families that uh, he was tending to in his uh, with his legal profession a lot of trouble and so he decided gosh maybe we need to increase the visibility of this. And he developed the Virginia uh, Healthcare Decisions Day. And that was so successful in Virginia that after a few years, uh, he made it a National Healthcare Decisions Day. And a few years ago, the a Conversation Project, which is a uh, an international um, effort uh, at helping us all to think about what matters most and to have uh, designated a um, a healthcare agent and and form an advanced care plan. They they took it over. So uh, the, uh, the the conversation project now helps to manage the the whole series of events in the country uh, that uh, all types of organizations and individuals do uh, just to take time out of one's life and you know say well we did I make uh, am I making decisions about my future you know where is that. Okay, the same way you have to do that when you file your taxes, uh, you got it, you know, it's good to take a look at yourself as well. Um, so that's what National Healthcare Decisions Day is. And I'm going to go to the end here in terms of what um, I, I, I uh, hope that uh, all the viewers and all the viewers, that you, the people you talk to uh, after you see the show will do. And that is uh, on or about April 16th, nothing magic about that day, but uh, soon. Um, uh, ask yourself, gosh, do I have, uh, have I designated a healthcare agent, somebody to speak for me uh, if I can't speak for myself? If you can speak for yourself and you're sick, great. Um, it's only when we have a problem we can't speak for ourselves because we're, we're too sick that, that you need the healthcare agent. And the second thing, have I talked to that person that, I've, that I trust uh, about what matters most to me uh, when I'm facing the, my last days here uh, on earth. Well, then what do I want to have done? What do I want not to have done? And, um, and the, a lot of the other details about my life that I want to make sure people know about uh, if I can't uh, tell them that myself. So what, what I'd like to um, ask every one of us to do, I'm going to do it myself, is, you know, uh, gosh, do I have a health care agent? Is it in a safe deposit box? Is it, uh, is it somewhere people, does anybody know about it? Uh, and then uh, how about that conversation? Is it time to update that conversation if I haven't had it? So that's the, the yeah, end Bob, I just wanna, yeah, Go ahead. I just want to <laughs> I just want to throw in there when, when especially I, I think it was with the, the person from the, the Nantucket Hospital. I know I'm not supposed to say the word Nantucket on this show, but it was the Nantucket Hospital. And they said, I said they said on average when they when someone's at the hospital and they've got a healthcare proxy and so now they're calling the healthcare proxy to say, oh, well, you know, so-and-so is in the hospital and they've got these issues. Um, the, the, about 20 to 25% of the people that they call say, what, I am? So it's like, not only is it in the safe deposit box, but did you actually tell the person, you know, 
that they're your products, let alone have a conversation with them. I just want to mention that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Also, that... I just want to throw in too. I've met Nathan, and and I did a um and I did a webinar with him last year on National um, Healthcare Decisions Day, and one of the things that is striking about Nathan, and I know he's an attorney and he deals with elder law all the time, but he's also a pretty young guy. Um, he looked to me to be maybe, you know, barely pushing 40, although I'm not a good judge of that. Um, but, but that's the other piece about all this that, that I want to make sure that we bring up as much as I'm a geriatric care manager and Walt and, and Arthur is a elder law attorney and Bob is, is, you know, retired in healthcare and, and we're kind of all pushing that into the spectrum. Let's remember Terry Chivo and what she taught us is that, you know, a woman in her thirties that was kept alive on machines for, I forget now, was it Arthur, was it like eight or 11 years or something like that? Because she didn't designate, she had had a conversation around the kitchen table with her husband that she would never want that. She was in a terrible accident and she was being kept alive on machines, but her family, her, her mom and dad and her family had not had that conversation with her and had a really tough time um, sort of, you know, making a decision to turn those machines off. And it went, it was something like, millions and millions and tens of millions of dollars to, to solve this. And it got solved in court. And um, so it, it's not just about elders, maybe elders yeah. making decisions about how they want the end of their life to be is important. But what's more important than that, in my opinion, is that everybody have a discussion and have an assigned healthcare proxy. Because once you're 18 years old, mom and dad can't talk to you anymore. They can't even get any information about you. So it's the whole lifespan from 18 forward that really needs to have this conversation. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more, Sandy, that um, I, um, uh, there are a couple of things I want to share. One is um, a fact about our, our wonderful community in the vineyard. Uh, we at Healthy Aging uh, took a look and uh, to see how many of us um, on the vineyard have actually designated healthcare agents. Um, so, um, they, the hospital keeps records of this, and it turned out last fall, and hopefully it's better now, but last fall, it was about 16% of the records had a healthcare agent designated. That's 16, bad. 16. 60, 16. No, 16. Now, the national average is about 55%, none too good. It should be 100%. There are some communities, La Crosse, Wisconsin being one, that it is 100%. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, uh, something that I think we can do uh, here on the vineyard, not just to have the number, but just to avoid some of the issues that I'm going to uh, that I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about in a, in a moment. But we're we have a long, long way to go uh, here uh, on the vineyard. So um, so the story I, I want to tell is uh, one that one of the reasons that I, I spend my time doing this in my retirement. And that was uh, a number of years ago when I was back in Delaware, I was um, I had some teaching responsibilities and I used to round on various uh, units. And this day I, I went to um, visit with the trauma guys. I'm an internal medicine guy, not a surgeon. Uh, this was a surgical unit, but I used to go see what was going on there and uh, just to get a feel for you know how the care was going. And so I went on rounds with the head of trauma, a, a surgeon named uh, Glenn and his team. We had fellows and students and residents, all types of people. And we came across a, a young man, he must have been in his mid thirties, and he was not in very good shape. It was obvious uh, to anybody and certainly obvious to uh, medical professionals that there was a lot of problems here. Um, so he was uh, not able to communicate. He was on all types of, uh, had all types of tubes, breathing machine, you, you pick it. And from the, the presentation of the, uh, the, the folks on the, the team there was, pretty obvious that he uh, had a terrible, terrible traumatic injury and his likelihood of recovery was gonna be poor. Um, so I you know, looked at the chart there and uh, listened in and I asked um, Glenn, and I said to listen to the chief surgeon, I said, uh, Glenn, uh, Mr. Smith here uh, doesn't look very good for him. And he said, um, you know, no, Bob, it doesn't. Uh, it, uh, he's, he's not, gonna, not gonna do well, he's not gonna make it. And, um, and, and I, then I asked him another question. I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm looking here at what we've been doing the last number of days and a whole lot of stuff is going on here. And um, if, if it's not obvious to me uh, that this is helping middle and uh, all these tubes and whatnot. And, and um, if, if, if he has no, we have no realistic hope. And he said, yeah, that that's right. And when he said that this look of sadness came across his eyes and I, and I, 
And he went on and he said, you know, Bob, we have multiple tragedies here. Mr. Smith has a terrible injury. He's not going to survive it. Um, but we have other tragedies. Uh, his family, he's got a big family and they're here a lot, but they don't agree about what should be done uh, to help Mr. Smith. And, and, and he never had a conversation with them. He didn't, didn't pick anybody out to speak for him. And they're all trying to speak for him. In fact, they're speaking loudly with each other. They're arguing with each other. And now, now they're arguing with the staff and it's, it's, it's ripping us apart. I don't know what to do about it, he said. Bob, but you know, I'm, I'm, I talked to the hospital lawyer. I got the ethics committee, uh, social work. We got to figure our way out of this mess. And you know, and then he just stopped. And that I tell this story many times, and it every time I tell it, I get a shiver down my spine because I can just relive that. Unfortunately, that was not the only experience I had of a similar nature. In fact, if you talk to pretty much any doctor. Uh, who's caring for sick people that have the same thing happen. And they see these multiple tragedies come about of an individual who can't be helped and a family uh, that is suffering more than it than they than they they need to suffer simply because um, they hadn't taken the time to to think what matters most in their life and and to 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 uh, talk to people about it. That would have solved a whole lot of that issue. It wouldn't have made Mr. Smith better, but it would have made the family able to focus on themselves, on the healing that they needed and the care they needed to give each other. So is that experience that really pushed me into uh, uh, being an advocate of advanced care uh, planning. And um, and act, right after that, I went home to talk to my wife. I said, Kathy, you know, uh, but, you know, rough day at the office today. I, uh, you know, I told her the story. I said, and you know what, thinking about like um, our um, our what we call medical power of attorney. Where is that? Oh, yeah, that's in the safe deposit box in the lawyer's office. That's not that good a place for it. Have we talked to anybody about that? No, we filled out the form. Okay, so we hadn't had a conversation. Uh, we had checked off the boxes of a form, um, you know, with a quarter of a loaf on this one. And that may have been helpful, might not have been helpful. But at any rate, we fixed that up. We had a conversation. We talked with our family. And, and, and since that time, I've really paid attention to it. In my own family, if I could just extend this into the personal thing, we do workshops at Healthy Aging Martha's Vineyard. We'll leave a little message of how to find us uh, if, if you think it might be useful. Um, uh, the, uh, in those, people tell stories, okay? And, uh, and they always do, because it's highly personal. So my story is about my parents, uh, because after that experience that I had in the, um, you know, it's gotta be 15 years ago, uh, in the trauma unit, I made sure I had a chat with my mom and dad and we sat down, you know, and I, we had it, we talked, Hey, listen, let's talk about what, what's important to you. What matters most? Who do you want to speak for you? And I, I brought a lawyer in and we got the paperwork taken care of, but we had the conversation. I can't tell you how important that was. My mother died five years ago of, um, of, uh, uh from Parkinson's disease. And at the end, she had trouble uh, speaking for herself. We knew what she wanted. Actually, some of the stuff that she wanted to have done were not things that I would have chosen, but we honored her wishes and kept her at home. She wanted to be at home. Uh, my dad just passed away this last November. Similarly, his, his condition had deteriorated. He had some dementia problems. He couldn't really speak for himself the last year of his life. And so um, as he got sicker, we were able to honor his wishes to keep him at home and to do the things that he wanted. And uh, that made all the difference in our family, all the difference. And um, uh, never, never great losing a, a happy day, losing one, uh, once a person you love, but uh, the healing that we're able to, to give each other, just um, remarkable. And that's all because we had the conversation. And Bob, I think that, that you, you, you go to a really important point, which is I think so that there are, everybody would like to feel that for as long as possible, they'll be able to make these decisions themselves. And, and often when I'm talking with folks, you know, they're, everybody dies, we all die, right? Nothing certain, more certain than death and taxes, right? <clears throat> but we all die in different ways or, and we're all frail in different ways. And, and, you know, folks think, hope that they'll be able to continue making these decisions, you know, right up to the really, a time that's really close to their death. But you, as you mentioned, in the case of both of your parents, for so, so often people have end up for if today with it, some for prolonged period of time because they have Alzheimer's, because they have Parkinson's, 
where they may have a disease where where it kind of sneaks up on them. And so they can't, there's a, there may be a long period of time where they really, not only can't they be making decisions about kind of what are the kind of end of, really end of life decisions, but what are the ongoing decisions about their care? Because they, 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 they the, the end may be in a year, you know, it may be in a, it, it may be a long time. So in, in that pro, those kinds of decisions are decisions about that whole journey, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why the conversation is so important and why it, it isn't just an automatic, I'm going to be a healthcare proxy for my spouse. It's a highly charged time period. It could be a prolonged time period. And, and those are the conversations that families need to have in depth. And again, any one of us is happy and, and you'll, you'll have across your screen ways to get a hold of all of us. Any one of us is happy to help you facilitate those kinds of conversations with your family and think about pieces of this that we know about that um, that that may not be quite obvious. And therefore, um, just to give you some food for thought, and, and it's again, it doesn't have to be a sad or a scary conversation. It's actually you know, quite you, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Can, they, you, they, talk, they, can you talk about kind of what your what your folks are doing? Because I know it's so great sure. that you have really a group of of, of really volunteers that have yes. been really actively trying to work this for a while now. Well, there, there are a number of organizations, um, uh, Sandy's prominent uh, organization, prominent among them, that form the Advanced Care Planning Coalition. Healthy Aging Martha's Vineyard is a part of that. And as a, uh, our particular part of the program uh, is to help do stuff like this, you know, uh, do the consciousness raising. Uh, but we also run uh, workshops and we do them regularly, at least uh, uh, two or three times a month. Um, often through the, uh, generally through the libraries or the councils on aging. Uh, we have a schedule. We do it on Zoom. We become modern on this. Hopefully we'll get back in person. Those are sessions that uh, people enjoy. They enjoy them uh, because they get to talk about what matters most to them. And we all learn stuff. I've done a whole pile of these. And each time I learn something uh, new and uh, important. So it's, um, those are resources we, that are, available to, uh, to, uh, to anybody who wants it, they're free. And um, we, we just love, uh, love learning from, from all the folks who, uh, who come through, so. That, that's a wonderful, and, and, and so, and where could they find that information? Or will we be able to post that? Or is there a website? Yes, it's, a, it's a, the, the Martha's, Healthy Aging Martha's Vineyard website. And I've also left a phone number uh, to the, call the office uh, and uh, speak to our executive director and we'll get you get you connected uh, with that. But you know the the councils on aging, uh, you know uh, certainly Sandy and uh, you are there's there are resources uh, through the community and on the, uh, the the web excellent resources that are very tangible how to have a conversation. Uh, there are superb videos um, that uh, that can take it uh, step by step uh, through that. The most important thing is natural conversation, something that you have and not to be afraid of it. And once that happens, um, uh, we will, uh, our 16% will become, you know, much more than that. So that's great. And, and so as we're, uh, Bob and I and Sandy were talking before this, this meeting, this, the, the, before the show, and we really talked to the fact that, well, look, National Healthcare Decisions Day. By the time you see this show is going to be like right around the corner. So you're going to get this done before between then and now? No. But say to yourself, as of this National Healthcare Decisions Day, that your decision is that by next National Healthcare Decisions Day, at the latest, you're going to have this done, right? And you're, you're going to have dusted the thing, you know, you probably, you may have a proxy, but you're going to go find it. And you're going to tell the person who has the proxy that they're the proxy. You may want to even bring a copy of the proxy to your doctor's office because he's required, he or she is required to take it and put it in your record so that somebody will have it. And then you're going to go have the conversation. You're just going to have the, and, and it, it, I think it goes to Bob's point. The question is, what is important to you? What is important to you? If you, if you knew you had a year to live, if you knew you had a week to live, what is important to you during that time? You know, and 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 ha so have this comment. There were a lot of people that wanted to talk to you about this because we're all we're all in this together. You know, we're all in this together. So Bob, thank thanks a million. We we really appreciate this, Sandy. Once again, thank you for getting these great people to come onto this show. 
um, folks, we hope you enjoyed the show. Do these, do this for yourself. Do this for yourself. Um, and I'm sure that we'll keep, we'll keep following you. We'll keep making you guilty all this year until next year at National Healthcare Decisions Day. So thank you for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.